I actually wanted to kind of come before you today with just kind of a, I guess, something that I actually have on my mind here. I, I'm, you know, just kind of thinking out loud and stuff like that. So when I actually start thinking, you know, out loud, I actually sometimes want to just try and just want to get, you know, just try to kind of talk about it out loud, I guess, to, to somehow get some sort of a understanding of what's going on. You know, what a lot of times we hear people, you, you know, here on YouTube, and not only on YouTube, but also out in society and everything like that, that actually, you know, say things, but they actually do something else or actually represent something else, you know. You know we go to church, you know, for those that do go to church and believe in the Bible and such, we, you know, profess all of these things or we know all of these facts about the Bible. We know the precepts, the concepts, and we know all the scriptures and pretty much what they mean for the most part. But the only, the disappointing part about it is that that's all that it is to us. Just something that we know. We don't have really any real interest in wanting to do or abide by the precepts of the Bible, but we know different scriptures because we were once raised in a church and we know, you know, pretty much how the scriptures relate to our everyday living. This came as a result, this video actually is a result of, I guess, something that a YouTuber actually said. I mean, this is a video that I actually listened to recently, but this is not just only, you know, a jab at this particular person who did a video, but this is just something that I've actually you want to talk about in general because we have a lot of people that actually say that they believe in the Bible, but they are comfortable not applying the Bible to their life. You know, I'm a bit confused because, and maybe, I don't know, maybe it's just me. And I'm not saying that I'm perfect or everything because I know that we are all far from for, from perfection. Because the moment that we reach perfection, then there's really no need for us to be really here on earth. We should be up there with the Lord, you know, helping him to handle things. But, as if he needs any of our help, right? But, you know, aside from that, I'm kind of a bit confused because if you leave, believe in something then, of course, you would actually, uh, at least at some point or another, you know, allow this particular belief of yours to actually make some sort of an appearance in your everyday living. And we have a lot of people, you know, that, you know, who say that they're strong Bible thumping, you know, I wouldn't say Bible thumping, but Bible believers, but yet still they're comfortable with living and treating people all kind of way, acting in certain kind of ways, you know, even using four letter words and swearing, you know, like a sailor, you know, they're comfortable with that. But at the same time, they believe in the Bible. It's this type of mentality and this type of, I guess, uh, I don't know, this type of thinking that actually is the reason why we have a lot of confused people that really don't know what way to go and they really don't know how to treat religion and how to actually put it in its proper place because of the mixed signals that we who are claiming to know Christ, you know, it's those mixed signals that we send to them that really makes them a bit, I would say, very confused. And because of that confusion, they actually go on, you know, and live in life you know, stating the same thing that we've presented to them because they just don't know any better because this is what they're accustomed to. They're accustomed to people, you know, saying that I believe in the Bible, but yet still I don't want to live a safe, sanctified and Holy Ghost filled life. To me, those are two contradictory things on, you know, on 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 just equals on opposite sides. You know, it's like the concept. It's like you ask God, you know, save me, Lord, but don't let me give up sin. I mean, how is that possible? You know, but it's it's so, conf you know, it's so amazing, you know, on how the mind thinks, you know, how our minds are geared to think when it actually comes to the concept of religion. Now, we already know that, you know, we've been born in sin and, you know, the need for us to get saved, sanctified and the Holy Ghost filled because that is the right thing to do, you know, if you want to spend eternity with the Lord. But. We want to actually do this on our own terms. And that's the reason why I think we have a lot of people. And that's the reason why also, too, we have a lot of things that are going on in the churches in these days. 
I mean, we have a lot of controversies that are arising every day as a result of this type of thinking. We have a lot of people that, you know, are trying to do their evil deeds and everything like that. And then when they are actually caught, they want to go and quote Bible scriptures as a way of justifying or a way of them escaping, you know, what they have done. And we already know that for the most part, that's not possible because, it, again, you know, we all have to give an account for everything that we do in our bodies. But it's just that, you know, we have people, you know, who don't really care and I guess that's the correct way to put it. They just really don't care for the most part that they are sending out mixed signals, you know, when they're actually talking about, you know, their lifestyle and for the most part what they're doing. But yet still they believe in the Bible. And they and the thing about it is that they, they do it and they really don't have like they really seem like they don't really have a conscience. They really I mean, it's just they don't care anymore. They're quick to say, you know, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, you know, and like I say, that's my business and stuff like that. And, you know, even though I know I'm doing wrong, I know that this is what the Bible says. OK, if you know that this is what the Bible says, you know, then why are you not applying it to your life? Why are you not applying it to your everyday living or at least striving to include this as a part? I mean, because we have to understand is that the. The overall way to, I guess, to kind of make God move for us is that we actually really put in the effort. And a lot of times these days, the effort is not actually being put in there because we just feel that it's just not worth the effort. Which, again, lends to credibility of what I'm saying is that, you know, we have a lot of people still who really don't understand or know what this whole thing is about. Even though Christ says, how, how long will I be with you? How long do I have to be with you? And you don't even know who I am. You know, and it's like you have a lot of people who profess again. And these are folks, for the most part, who were, you know, raised maybe in a church. You know, and when they got older, they developed their own way of thinking, you know, well, I don't want to do this anymore because I think that this is forced religion, that sort of thing. But yet still, I know that there's still a God that, you know, that is a higher power. OK, well, if you know that there's a God that's a higher power and rules and, and governs us as human beings and individuals, then why not devote your life and, and actually live according to the Bible? You can't live something that you don't believe in. I mean, I guess that's pretty much what I'm saying. Because to do or say anything else otherwise, you're lying. You're lying to yourself because you're not lying to God. I mean, because either you're going to be all in or you're not going to be a part of it at all. And see, it's the fact that we as human beings are trying to find this way of this kind of in-between type of thing where we're trying to really serve God, but we want to serve him on our own terms. We want to do things our own way. We want to craft this thing to make it acceptable for us as opposed to, you know, doing it the right way. You know, you're professing that you're that, you know, God, but yet still you don't even want to be saved. I mean, what is that all about? You're professing that, you know, that there's a Holy Ghost that exists, but you don't want to allow the Holy Ghost to come out and really have its way in your life. You want God to bless you, but yet still you want to continue to do your own thing. And see, the Antichrist, I believe, is uh, really a. The reason for a lot of this stuff going on. I mean, like I say, even though the Antichrist is on the scene, that still doesn't take away our ability to think and put things in its proper perspective. Because remember, you know, the Antichrist, Satan, if you want to call it that, they're all the same person. They cannot he cannot enter you and make you do anything without you actually wanting to do it on your own, which is meaning that you're willfully wanting to do this. And, you know, I think that a lot of people still they really don't really can take that into consideration. You know, we have, you know, we can quote Bible scriptures all day, you know, even have the book where it is, you know, even down to the verse where it is. But yes, and we can even, you know, sit down and really explain it as, you know, given the background and the history of it. I mean, but and all of that is fine. I mean, that shows that you're that you know that you're that you study. But yet still, what's the whole point in studying and in this case, studying to make the change when you're not even willing to want to even make the change. 
I mean, it's, it's a bit confusing because really you're unclear about what you want to do. I mean, you're you're really lost really in the way that you're thinking because, you know, it's like you've gone off on a tangent wanting to, I don't know, do your own thing. And when it comes to that particular type of thinking, it's very dangerous. It really is. It's very dangerous. And it really sends out mixed signals to those who are really trying to find their way back to Christ. See, what we have to understand is that um, everybody that's out there lost in the world out there right now, does, they're not out there wanting to stay out there. Let me get let's just let me just kind of get that. It's kind of an understanding on that. Just a moment. Everybody who's out there, you know, they're out there in the world. They're out there because, you know, I guess situations and circumstances they feel that you know there is no other way for them to escape it so they figure that you know to run away you know into the world is the only answer and see sometimes you know we as christians we as those as followers of christ can sometimes be very harsh you know and very unyielding and understanding in situations like that Everybody that's out there that are, you know, out there doing things, whether it be prostitution, selling drugs, you know, stealing everything. Sometimes, you know, it's not that they really, you know, want to do these things. It's the fact that they really don't know what to do. They are in a situation and they don't know how to handle it. And the first thing that comes to their mind is to do something that they feel that would offer them some sort of uh, immediate relief, if I can put it like that. That's why sometimes we have to have that discernment, not to really look on the surface at things that we may see, but actually, you know, be able to look underneath what's going on to see what's really going on. See, one thing about it, God says that he, he says, render the heart, not the garment. He looks at the heart. And sometimes the heart will be telling us something, even though the actions may be saying something else. That's why sometimes when you want to really get to what really is going on with the person, you know, you have to really take away from what's on the surface. We have to look away and take away from what's on the surface and look at what's going on in the heart because the heart can reveal things that really that would not be easily seen on the surface. You know, this is one of those deep things, kind of like deep understandings that I guess that I'm trying to kind of deliver this, this morning. But everybody that's out there that's in the world right now, it's not that they want to be in the world. It's just that they, can, they feel that they don't have any other way of escape. And we as Christian folks, those are Holy Ghost filled, those who are professing the faith are supposed to be on task and ready to be available to identify and see these things and to go out there and tend to the need through ministering and, you know, that sort of thing, you know, and just kind of going out there and giving the word to those. Because, again, you may have some people that may buck and shuck. And may make fun, but you have those who are really looking for someone to approach them. I mean, you have some of them that are saying that what their church hurt. You know, they don't want to really, you know, be involved with religion anymore because somebody let them down. You know, somebody did something to them, you know, that was inappropriate, you know, and they have a hard time letting go. I mean, things life happens. I mean, come on, we are all human beings. But sometimes we have to look at that as them saying, OK, help me. Because sometimes, you know, most people these days, they're not going to really come out and say, I need for someone to help me. You know, if that was the case, OK, a lot of churches would be, I guess the seats would be a lot more filled than what they are. But you have a lot of them that are saying, help me, but they don't even know how to voice it. They don't know how to say it. So that's why sometimes we have to be on task to go out there. You know, but sometimes, again, with them looking for a way to get out of their mess and they're looking at us and seeing that we're saying one thing and doing something else. You know, it's like, OK, I'm confused here. I really don't know what to do here. I'm looking for help. I'm trying to find my way back to religion, back to church, back to Christ, because I know who Christ is. I was born, uh, raised in the church. I'm trying to find my way back. But it's hard because the ones who are supposed to be leaders of the church, they're giving up mixed signals. You know, and that's kind of like a bad report on our part because, you know, it's like we're not stepping up and doing all that we can or making more of a push to go out there to give the word. I mean, like I say, you know, we can't allow, you know, the enemy to show us, you know, things that, you know, the things that can happen. You know, I don't it's like we it's like we're fearful. 
to go out there and launch in the deep at some point to go out there and to bring in lost souls. Again, the souls that are lost, all of them are not lost because they truly want to be lost. They're lost because they just don't know any other way to go. You know, I, it takes me back to that movie again with, uh, what is it, Poltergeist, you know, where they was wondering why their houses was being haunted. They're wondering why, you know, their lives were being tormented. It's because the souls that, you know, were there, they were not at peace. They didn't know where else to go. They needed to be shown the light on where to go so they can go ahead and enter into their rest. It's like it's the same thing here. It's like it's like a lot of confusion here. You know, they don't know where to go, but they need to be shown the light. OK, come on this way. This is the way. This is how to live. This is what we need to do. This is the way to do this thing. Come on. I'll show you what the, what needs to be done. But oftentimes they're not being shown that because a lot of times, you know, most of the folks who claim that they're saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost filled, they want to actually be popular with the world too and actually have God on standby, if we will. When things come down and, and troubles come our way, we want to go ahead and just kind of be switch that, that switch on, on and off because that is convenient for us. And it's sad, but, you know, that's the type of... Uh, religion that we actually have these days you know we have a lot of people there are saying that they believe in one thing but they are not living it and i'll say it again you can't believe in something and not live it that is just a concept that or a principle that we as the people of this day and age have developed but that's not something that god says that ever should have been you know he never created it he never was anybody he never authored it that's something that we've created and the reason why it was created is because we've taken our eyes off of God and putting it onto ourselves. And in the end the aspect, we see the damage that it's doing, you know, to our youth, you know, and like I say, to those uh, older adults. I mean, like I say, you go out there and mention, you know, Christ and the church and everything else. These days, people are going to sit up there and laugh at you because you choose to serve God. Why? Because they've seen too many instances where those who are in leadership positions misrepresent the body of Christ. That's just the way that it is. And that's a reality that we have to really understand. That's what this is. The, this is what this is the time that we're living in. These are the circumstances that we're dealing with. And when asked to, you know, make the correction and make the change, the first thing that we're going to do is like, you know, I don't want to do this anymore because it's, it's we feel that we're not getting the rep, I guess, the recognition that we think that we need. We're not getting the earthly rewards that we think we should have. I mean, like I say, it's like it, it, it's like pulling a tooth when it comes to religion, when it comes to, you know, being asked to be real. I mean, like it's like taking medicine It's like it's bitter. But in that meaning, we certainly don't want to take it. But, you know, in the end, it'll do us a lot of good. I mean, like I say, it's so much wrong that's being done. And the fact about it is that it's being overshadowed now to. And it's tainted religion and tainted folks views on religion to nobody wants to be involved. Nobody wants to stand up and, you know, take this thing and really deal with it. We want to just ignore it and just continue doing our own thing. But we see that the after effects of this, you know, we can't we can't really ignore this because this is a problem. You know, I believe in the Bible. I believe, you know, this, that and the other. I believe this, you know, but. I don't want to be, I don't want to live it. Well, you know, you're going to either be one or the other. Either you're going to believe and go all in, like I said earlier, or you're just going to throw it all away because God says, I will, I really want, I really, he said, it, and, and the other thing about it, the main thing is about it, you know, all of this has a lot to do with what's going on in, in that seventh church that's mentioned in the book of Revelations, which is the church of Laodicea. You know, where, you know, God says, I really want you, I, you need, you need to be really either hot or cold because you're lukewarm. And when you're lukewarm, I really don't know where you are. And, you know, because of that, I spew you out because you, you don't know what you want to do. One moment you want to serve me. The next moment you want to do your own thing. I don't know. So it's best that I remain on this side over here until you figure out what you want to do. And see, right now we're living in, I don't know, we're living in revelations, no doubt about that. But it's like you don't know how much longer we have in that book before it's all over. 
We just don't know. That's why you cannot sit there and say that I have time to figure out what I want to do. The clock is ticking. I mean, all of us, in a sense, are on borrowed time. I mean, like I say, all of mankind is on borrowed time, you know, but we have to make sure that the time that we have that doesn't belong to us, that we use it wisely and stop sending out mixed signals. I mean, like I say, you know, you have a lot of people that say they love the Lord and everything. They profess with their heart, but God says that they profess with their mouth. I'm sorry, but their heart is far from me. You have the form of godliness, but, you know, when you get to yourself, you know, you're denying that who I am and who you are or who you're supposed to be in me. So we really have to understand, you know, that when you send out signals, when they're mixed like that, you know, you may find you may think that you understand it according to your own terms or your own ways of thinking. But you got to understand you're sending out and you're confusing folks out there who are really trying to find their way back to Christ. And that is that is a bigger disappointment. You are already disappointing God by wanting to do your own thing by being wishy-washy. But you're actually being a greater disappointment now because you're contributing to those who are still out there and those who are actually joining the world every day. You have a lot of people that are leaving the pulpit every day. They're leaving the church every day. Because of the mixed signals that they're getting from those who claim that they are saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost filled. And then when they get out there, the world, first of all, they're not going to give them any mixed signals. The world is going to tell them, this is who I am. This is what we do. This is how we is, as they say. Take it or leave it. And unfortunately, a lot of them are taking it because they don't know what's going on. They don't know who the people of God are anymore. Everybody is not trying to run away from Christ. And I'm not trying to make it to seem like it is, but you have some people that are really that are really being pulled back out there in the world. Because, again, we don't know who we are. We are not representing the person that we say that we're supposed to be in the body of Christ. I'm not saying that it's an easy job. It's not because each calling comes with something that we have to do that's going to require a struggle. You know, but we just have to be able to understand and know that even in the struggle. God is still going to help you and still refine you and still mold you and make you into the person that he wants you to be. But you just got to be willing to just hang in on, you know, hang in for the long haul. I mean, like I say, trouble don't last always and struggles don't last. I mean, he gives you a moment of peace and rest to enjoy living and being, you know, enjoy the things that he gives to you now. But like I say, it's just the fact that, you know, when it time when it comes time to get the job done. These mixed signals that's being sent out, we can't do that. Because we're cheating. We're robbing God of what God says is his. And we all belong to God. But when we actually tell somebody or show somebody or live in a way that shows somebody, OK, you're this way in church. But yet still, when you're outside of church, you behave this way. Who are you? I tell you what. Why don't the same words that you come to me and witness to me about and tell me what I need to do and correct? Why don't you go ahead and take that as your own advice? And see how and, and, and I guarantee you, if someone was to actually tell us that we would get angry and rightfully so. But again, it would make us consider our ways. Because one of the main things that God that is really, I think, and I could be wrong, I'm a, I'm a human being, I'm allowed to have my opinion. But I think the, one of the main things that I think that grieves the heart of God is when someone turns their back on God because of the actions of someone who is professing to be saved, sanctified, and Holy Ghost filled. Like I say, you know, it's when you're serving God, it's serious business. And I'm not saying that we do it all, you know, perfect every day. That's why we have the Holy Ghost to lead us and to teach us to, into maintaining this thing. That's why we need him. But one of the main things that we can do or one of the worst things that we can do and that's being done all the time is sending out mixed signals. And that's really the reason why the world is increasing or I should say that's one of the reasons why, you know, heaven or hell is enlarging itself daily for those type of people. And like I say, it's un it may seem like it's unfair I mean, and like I say, I'm not attacking Christian folks or those who are saying, but it's just more of a, 
awareness that I actually want to bring forth to let folks know that, you know, you have to be careful, you know, and represent God well, or at least to the best of your ability. I mean, there's still going to be things that you're going to do wrong. We're not perfect. You know, correction is going to come. And when it comes, it only comes to make us better people. But we just have to be able to understand and just know that we cannot be sending out mixed signals because the enemy loves that. Anything that actually that causes his army to enlarge, he loves that. And he'll do anything he can to keep that confusion going so his army can be enlarged. That's all that I have for now.